Hi there everybody, it's Joel Hughes from Glass Mountains here. Um, if you're looking to either create a new WordPress site to get a quote for that or to maybe redesign your existing site and you're going to be reaching out to potential suppliers, then what I'm going to do might help for you today. I'm going to run through eight key questions which um, in our experience are very helpful to have answers to. So if you flesh through these answers, if you thought, thought it through, and understand um, what you need, then you're going to be in a much better place to obtain really thought out quotes back from um, agencies. Because what happens when agencies don't get really thought out um, briefs and questions and answers and statements, etc., is that they've got to fill in the gaps and they'll have to make assumptions. And sometimes those, ass those assumptions are stated and sometimes they're just implicit. The problem for you as somebody who's got to wade through those proposals is that if you've got no idea where's assumptions and all that kind of stuff, all the different quotes are like comparing apples with oranges. So if you go into them by clearly stating your requirements and using these questions as a yardstick, you're going to get quotes back which are a much more level playing field. Now, that's not to say, let's be clear here, that's not to say that you as the uh, as the client have to think through everything on behalf of the agency. No, obviously you're going to an expert and you want them to come up with ideas and solutions and to pick up the ball and run with it, etc. But as a starting point, as an initial way of starting the conversation with potential suppliers, you just want to have thought things through so that everybody's going off the same page. Now, as you develop um, at your relationship with the chosen agency, obviously they may well suddenly go, oh, okay, you can do this or you can interface with this CRM system or maybe use an iPhone app. You may well think of things which you've not thought of. You never know, they might even flag some up in the quote. But the purpose of these questions is for you to be able to select a supplier based on the fact they've thought through your answers and also that you're able then to look at all the different quotes you're going through and know that if they've listened to you, which is obviously a good start, they will um, they will be hopefully providing a brief back which fits your basic needs rather than the situation where if you've got a very vague brief, you're going to get very vague proposals back. OK, so that's the general idea. Oh, uh, one quiet caveat. This is a, this is aimed towards WordPress, but, you know, Mostly, you could probably apply this to any website. Um, excuse me if I have a quick glug of coffee. Now, my company, Glass Mountains, we specialize in the WordPress platform. 95% of the time, our projects will be built on WordPress. WordPress has got a lovely content management system built into it, and many of our clients are already familiar with, so it's almost like a, a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, for the kind of projects we work on, the kind of projects being we do a lot of B2B, the websites are highly polished marketing points, so really they don't always have a lot of functionality. I mean, they might, they pretty much always have, will have a contact form, they might have newsletter signups, and then we might get into more advanced functionality such as um, e-commerce, that's, that's very complex. Um, we might have event booking calendars. Or you might get really, really complex with sort of um, multi-vendor websites and all manner of things. Functionality can get very expensive. So you really want to have a clear idea of what functionality you want your website to do. Just express it in as clear, simple terms as possible. List it out in bullet points, but be very clear what functionally the website will need to do. And this is a killer point. So I've already mentioned WordPress and you may or may not be familiar with it, but WordPress offers a marketplace where you can download prepackaged shrink wrapped functionality. So you need um, you need e-commerce. Well, there's a whole suite called WooCommerce. There's other e-commerce plugins as well. We just happen to use Woo WooCommerce. Now, WooCommerce happens to be a massive e-commerce plugin, and indeed, you've got sub-plugins within WooCommerce to handle things like complex shipping rates and this, that, and the other. But you could find a plugin for, as I say, an event booking calendar. We use um, Event Booking Pro. There are others as well. You might find a plugin to handle, well, SEO. We've got the Yoast plugin. You might be familiar with that. There's a huge marketplace for the shrink-wrapped prepackaged plugins, which you can download. You can configure 
and configure within the constraints of what the plugin author has set for you to configure and you can use it. Now, the compromise is the key here because if you want to have very specific functionality which you cannot find an exact plugin fit for, well, you're going to have to have that built bespoke and that gets costly. On the vice, on the flip side, if you are able to be shown plugins and say, okay, these are three plugins we can use to achieve um, your member login area, say. These are the pros and cons of each. Which one are you happy with? And if you're happy to modify your requirements to fit one of those plugins, great. Because in reality, that'll mean you'll be able to achieve um, the functionality you require cheaper than bespoke, and it'll take shorter to deliver. But key is knowing that you're able to compromise on that. Bear in mind, if you mold the roadmap of your business, even if, let's just go with that example of the member login area, even if you're not, you know, you don't love the functionality, it isn't really what you want in the ideal world, but this is a new service, why don't you just roll it out with the plugin, make the best job of it so there's a good, solid user experience and you play to the strengths of the plugin. And then if it takes off, and it adds value and generates revenue, et cetera, for your business, then further down the line on the roadmap, why don't you invest more heavily in completely bespoke to then get what you want? There's no point spending too much money on bells and whistles from day one when you need the basics. So you know, in, in your brief to the guys about the functionality, explain what you, you know, what you would like to have, what 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 would, what would it be nice to have in the ideal world? Explain where you would want to compromise. Don't just say it needs to do this. Give a give some idea of the leeways because if you're going to get people to quote, especially in terms of WordPress, the WordPress agencies are going to need to know: Can we use plugins? Similar to the whole plugin question, are you able to compromise on design? So we've already mentioned there's a marketplace for shrink wrapped off the shelf. A, a, bits of functionality called plugins on WordPress. There is also a shrink wrap marketplace for off the shelf designs called themes. So you can find a theme, you know, you might have a big image on the homepage with some text and blah, blah, blah. You'll be able to download the theme, you'll be able to change its colors, you'll be able to change certain parameters which the theme author has allowed. So we're back into the same situation really. If you can then compromise how you want things to look, based on what that theme offers, then you'll be able to realize the cost savings and time savings of using that theme. Where themes can go wrong though, is that if you download a theme thinking it's gonna be cheap and then, well, oh no, on the homepage, we need to have um, a, a, a two slider areas with some animation here. If the theme doesn't support that, you're stuck. So if you're not prepared to go compromise on the theme, you're much more, a better solution for you is to have a completely bespoke design. And in truth, 95% of the websites we work on are completely bespoke designs because the clients have got a very specific brand guidelines. They really want to um, pinpoint that messaging and that experience when people hit the, the website. So they want to go the extra mile of having that bespoke theme. So think about it. Can I, can I compromise on functionality? Can I compromise on the, on the design? Which ultimately means in WordPress, can we use a theme? The website is going to need lots of words. It's going to need lots of content. It might, it's going to need some images. It's going to need maybe videos. Maybe you're going to have to link to podcasts. Maybe there's white papers. Who is creating that content? Who Don't expect the web design company to do it. Some web design companies offer that as well. We don't. We don't do branding and we don't do content creation. We can work with um, trusted partners and can recommend in trusted partners if need be. But if we're clear from the outset who is creating the content, everyone can make the right decision. Maybe you've got preferred partners that you want to work with. And, and if you need suggestions, we can. But knowing who's going to create that content is very, very important and being clear on it. We don't want uh, anyone to have to assume there. At some stage, after you've agreed the design, whether it's bespoke or whether it's a theme and it's been developed onto a test website, etc., at some stage, somebody is then going to need to take all that content that's been created and put it onto the new website. Now, there's plenty of ways you can skin this cat. 
in, in my case, my team can do everything. We can take the content, we can make design decisions on how it's laid out, or go in the other end of the scale, we can give your website admin um, team uh, training on how to use the new layout system so that they can just go ahead and start populating content themselves. Whatever route is best, um, we can work with. The key though is being clear what you want. Or if you're not if you're not clear, ask what the agency can provide so you can decide. Do you have a deadline? And is that deadline and what is the reason behind that deadline? Is it arbitrary? It don't everybody in the ideal world would like the website next week, but processes take time. It takes time to work out what is the structure of the new website? What is what is the design of the homepage? Who is creating the content? That could take anywhere between six weeks and six months plus. So I wouldn't put a deadline in there unless, unless there's very, very solid reasons. By all means, say that you know, we would hope this to be live within three to five months. That's fine. That's good. But don't say it's got to be live in three months if there's no reason behind that deadline. Now, if you are, if there is a reason, i.e. like uh, first, of, first of September, we're relaunching our complete new brand. Uh, you know, there's the company logo, there's the livery on the cars and the lorries, there's the clothing, blah, blah, blah. And we need the new website to go live on first of September. Right. That's an understandable hard deadline. And. If it's a scale project, as long as there's a good chunk of time between now and 1st of September, you know, like you could do now, you're completely fine. So just be clear on deadlines, because if if there's a deadline in there and there's no reasoning behind it, some companies will interpret it as uh, as as solid and some will question it. So it's best to be clear. Think in terms of hosting and support and most companies and we certainly do, will offer a little bit of teething in support when the website goes live anyway, because we want you to walk away happier. Um, if, if you want us to host or and or support the website as well, we can certainly do that. But think of that from day one, because it's if you've thought about who's going to support the website before it goes live, then you've got a much easier transition period after the website goes live, where, for instance, you know, if we are supporting the website go live, well, it's not so much of a teething in period because we're we're already a group, you know, we've already signed up to to support it. So we're just carrying on business as as usual. But think about that and think about the costs involved with hosting and support. Talking of cost, let's consider budget. It might not seem sensible at first to put a budget into your brief, but it does help. I mean, if you wanted a full e-commerce site then you know you're talking we've got 1500 pound i would know immediately you are not a right fit for us and it could be that you actually do have budget but you haven't thought it through so if you get a lot of kickback from um, agencies saying oh no we can't help with that that would tell you immediately now that's important because it takes quite a bit of time and effort from agencies to invest in responding to proposals, to unpacking your thinking and to coming back. So we need to know very, very quickly that there is budget available. There is sensible budget. Now, I, if you said we had 10 grand, I, I would take that with a pinch of salt. You might have more, you might have less, but at least I would know immediately. Fine. OK, there is there is money at play here. Some people worry that, oh, look, if you say it's 10 grand, then all the prices will come back in 10 grand. Look, I don't know about that. All I can say from our perspective is that that's not how it works, really. In our proposals, invariably, we will quote multiple prices anyway, because it could be that, um, like we mentioned earlier, you have bespoke design and you have off the shelf design. We could quote a smaller price, a cheaper price if it's off the shelf design. And maybe that price banding means that you can have a bit of extra functionality fitted into that 10K. Or for, for more money, we can do the bespoke design plus this. Or going back to what we we're just talking about with hosting and support, some of our high end hosting and support packages include 20 plus hours a month um, ongoing support. Well, for that kind of retainer, you don't have to pay a fixed price for your web design project. We can just sort of sign up for the retainer straight away and jump straight into designing. So and that might be an option which fits well with how you want to budget and how you want to pay for the project. So. 
I wouldn't get too hung up about not saying the budget, and I certainly wouldn't be surprised if, if agencies ask for it, because it's important for people to know that they're on the same page. So I hope that helps. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions, please just you know blast out below on YouTube or send me an email. Oh, I didn't put my email address on here. I'll drop it in, into the description on YouTube. JH at Glass Mountains Co. UK. Uh, my, my name is Joel Hughes. Obviously, if you've got a WordPress project or a website project which you uh, need some help with, please get in touch. Or if you just need some consultancy help with putting together your brief so that you can then send that out to um, people to, to submit proposals for, we can help with that as well. Thanks for listening. My name is Joel Hughes from Glass Mountains.